between 2006 to 2010 2012. The Mexican government and the parastatal oil company Pemex organized an oil extraction project known as the Gulf Tertiary Oil Project. It was a mega project. Wells were going to be drilled near 30 zero that would take or extract oil from the so called Paleo Canal, Chicontepec. It was a mega project, and this is also located in a certain strip of the national territory that includes places like Boza Rica, Veracruz, Papantla. This entire strip that is semi-mountainous, with very exuberant vegetation. A lot of heat, small water currents, is not exactly the coast. It is in territory on the Gulf of Mexico side, and is especially hot. They are places with great vegetation with many caves, with some strange places here and there. Oranges are given, many fruits are given, and you know what? That's where this story is woven. And tonight we are going to talk about Me Mexican Chanek. Yes, we talked about them some time ago. But it is always good to remember them and bring new stories, new stories, new experiences, to try to understand that to try to understand that this is a little more real than simply a fantasy, we begin. Stories of the dark side, ghosts, strange beings, unexplained events, human perversity, stories that other minds prefer to ignore, as I said a moment ago, in the tertiary oil project in the Gulf. Numerous companies were involved, some national, others foreign, and many people, because to drill a well, you have to work a lot, and there are many people involved. And one of those people was none other than Jorge, a friend of the channel who shared an experience with us. He was working in some fields, in some exploitation fields, where whales were being drilled. Each of these locations is known as a macropera. Yes, macropera. It is a place where the drilling rig is located, and mud pits are located. The control systems are also located there. Everything sophisticated that can be done to drill an oil well at great depth. Or he worked in one of these macro operas. And it is a very, very demanding job. To the point where some workers have to stay on site for two weeks. They don't move from there. They live there. They eat there. They sleep there. Everything is there. And they rest at home for two weeks, depending on the company. Because there are other companies that are 20 days in the field, 10 days at home. You earn more. The fact is that to be able to live in these places, it is necessary to have appropriate facilities. But the drilling is not very long. It is something that you arrive, assemble, drill, remove the equipment, clean and leave an extraction head. All the remaining equipment, all the other things that were taken, are moved to another place. And it is the case that in this place, in this macro pira, they installed campers. These mobile home systems have air conditioning a bathroom, bunk beds, and a work area, so that the workers, and in general, the people who are there, can have a certain degree of comfort while living in this place. As soon as the work is finished, everything is removed, cleaned, the leftovers are removed, or at least, that is what they say, and they are moved to another place. In this case, the story begins in the Ferberos field. In this place, Something strange suddenly begins to happen. Around 8 o'clock at night, while Jorge is returning from his activities to the camper, suddenly it sounds like someone is turning the mobile home around, with a stone in their hand as if scratching. They are made of sheet metal, so it looks like someone was turning the entire camper upside down, scratching it with a rock, 
in the back of each mobile home is a small metal tower, completely portable, with a water tank, a water tank. And there is also a portable septic tank, which is cleaned once the transport is going to be taken. It is inspected. Come on, there has to be some access. So that's always put behind us. And the dormitory campus, where the workers live are in the farthest part, is not very big. Won't you imagine that they are large extensions? They are lands of perhaps a couple of hectares. On one side are the technicians where the controls are, the administrative offices, and after that come the campers, the bedroom, the places where you live, and then the mesh that surrounds the perimeter and the vegetation. Because if something is characterized in this place, in Poza Rica, Kotsentla, Papantla, Tewatun, all this is that there is tremendous vegetation everywhere and numerous small streams and similar things. The thing is that no matter how much our friend Jorge looks out to see what it is, he doesn't see anyone there. Part of days later, again, as if someone were carrying a pebble, bothering, literally bothering. Nothing. He doesn't see anything. After finishing in Ferberos, they moved to Solidates, which was another oil field where he installed a whole bunch of campers again. Everything. And they were there. Well, this starts again. Pop, 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 pop. But it's not just Jorge who listens to it. Your RV towing partner hears it too. In that same trailer is Jorge, who is a supervisor of some oil issue, the operator of a large machinery, something else out there. And they listen. How do you turn it around? Pop, 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 pop. And nothing. After that, they move them to another oil field, and the same thing is repeated, and they are fed up and decide to catch the joker, hope for. And some night they are there waiting, listen to how it starts, because this starts right next to the door of the camper, and it turns around, turns around, turns around, all around, making that ugly noise. Corey and his partner decide, one to go this way and the other the other way to surprise him. When that noise starts, they both run out, and position themselves to catch it. But they perfectly hear how he turns the camper around. Pop, 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 And no one is there. But also, there is another problem. In this last oil field, the size of the land was very small, so there was not enough space to leave a step behind. Instead, there was the fence and the camper attached. There was nowhere anyone could turn it around. Of course, when they got nervous about that situation, they learned that it was the land of Shanex. And the Shanex don't like these things. And of course, two grown, working, strong men aren't exactly easy to impress, and you can't do much against them other than annoy them. But there are times they can go a little further. And in those same oil fields, another story happened to them. He didn't have to experience it, but he had to meet the person who's affected by it. It was a head of hygiene security. A person in charge of checking that everything happens in the security team, that everything is clean. Come on. Four or five companies are involved in one of these drillings, and there is a supervisor, and there are those from the oil company, etc. Many people. The fact is that this guy, for some reason, had to send at exactly two in the morning, every day, a report. There is shift after shift. The equipment cannot be stopped. So some get of the drill, lie down to sleep, and others get on and do their thing. The fact is that the head of hygiene security had to submit a report at two in the morning every day. It was one of those tremendous tasks. And so that he would not lose sleep. This guy, with temperatures above 30 degrees at night, let me tell you, that gets violent, and with mosquitoes and a lot of things. The only way to stay awake was to light cigarettes and smoke them. But as you know, in an oil field, it is impossible for anything to catch free in there. Anyone who offends him will throw him out. 
And what was that about hygiene safety? The thing is that in this field, that Las Campo is attached to the orange groves that surround the oil field. One of those nights he is overwhelmed. It has been day after day after day without sleeping more than for short periods, almost leaning against his desk. And at night he doesn't think he has the strength to get to the door where the guardhouse is and go there to smoke. He knows that at that moment of drilling there are no gases being released, that the risk is minimal. So temptation wins and the guy sits outside his camper. Smoking is prohibited inside the campers. He sits outside his camper in the part where he hooks the vehicle, the part in front. He sits there, makes sure no one comes, takes out his cigarette and lights it, and he is happy with life smoking his cigarette. When a friend appears, and the friend comes and says, Hey, give me a gift. Yes, yes, yes but, but don't say anything. And he smokes a cigarette. The other one argues. He doesn't complain. Ha ha ha. And the other one leaves. And he stays there and smokes his cigarette when he stops. Soon he looks here, looks there, takes out his flashlight, shines it towards the fence, towards the cyclone mesh that surrounds the oil field and everything is vegetation. And the first thing you think is why I gave you a cigarette and you come to play tricks on me thinking it's about his partner. He smokes his cigarette again, finishes that one, and since it's not yet two in the morning to send the report, he lights another one. Taking advantage of the fact that there are no toxic gases or dangerous things, he turns on the other one and is calmly smoking his cigarette when, turn on the flashlight and look here. But there is nothing there. There is the mesh and more vegetation. Annoyed, he continues smoking his cigarette, thinking that it is his co-workers who, upon seeing him smoke, are playing tricks on him. He finishes last cigarette, throws it away, take out another one. Boom. Turn it on. When this time he listens. But he hears it here, exactly in his ear, and feels like something has been set up here. He jumps with the lamp in his hand, and there is nothing. He only hears how the vegetation moves, as if something was moving through the undergrowth. Obviously, the guy feels his soul lifted. When he comments about it the next day, as if to see who had played the joke on him, to see what this was about, to see if... Man, the local people ended up telling him, Listen, you shouldn't be that so close to the vegetation so early in the morning because the Shanex don't like what you're doing and they can hurt him very badly. The fact is that I don't know that man. Jorge does not know what the fate of this guy was, but that scare could have been something very serious and that's where many questions come. In case you have not seen the video we have on the channel about Chanex, let me tell you that the Chanex is one of those rare creatures that lives between two realms. Between realm of the living and the realm of the spiritual. In the ancient belief of the Mexican native peoples, Chanex, Chanex was Jane's assistant, a kind of deity who lived in the deep territories where water caves and earth are found. It's not that it came from water like a lake or the sea, but from the water that lies below, from the underground streams, all of that. The Shanex are his assistants, they are his helpers, and they are not necessarily good. In fact, the name is Oregon, the one who lives in dangerous places, in dark places, in forbidden places, in places such as caves, Streams, closed vegetation, where we cannot walk easily, in those places where you can easily get lost. They live there, and that's how they talk about it. That's how they are. There are those who think they are jokers. There are those who think they are goblins. It isn't true. They are not goblins. They are different. The Duende is an elemental that corresponds to Earth. These are different. They don't wear hats. They don't go jumping around with castanets and bells, nor do they tie the manes of the horses. The Shanek goes naked when he can be seen. It can be from 1 meter 20 in height to 60 centimeters, which are the shortest. The Shanek also has other characteristics that definitely do not FT the profile of the Duende in the European sense. 
the Shanik can be very perverse, very bad. They are supposed to be guardians who are there to take care of nature, to take care of the water, the animals, all of this, that if you treat them well, they will treat you well and may even help you. I have not found a single story from someone who says that the Shanek helped them. And yes, we have found many stories that could be considered almost dangerous. He doesn't believe it. Let me tell you another story. This other story was shared with us by Miss C. He has asked us for anonymity, obviously, a few years ago. She was in her second year of high school. That is, a year before entering university at a high school in Mexico City. And as part of the end of the course, one of the teachers, one of those special teachers in life, organized the trip. This trip was to go and visit a town, go and meet the people of this town, to go and live with them. The teacher of Maestro Arcadio was the teacher of a subject, something like reading and writing. He was a very prepared man who came from a small town located between the area of Ciguatanejo and Acapulco on the Pacific coast of Mexico. Although it does not belong to the strip of the Veracruz Isthmus, it is located in an area of great vegetation, very hot, very coastal, and where, by the way, in addition to the seacoast that is located steps from the town, there are also rivers. The place is called El Catasaro. And the fact is that the students went there every year at the end of their courses to live with people, which was very beneficial for everyone, because you had there, I don't know, maybe 80, 90 young people living with local families. Learning from local families. Sure, man, we are talking about a few years ago when there were not so many problems. But the fact is that the kids go there. They can collaborate with people, help with various tasks, and get an idea of the world in which other Mexicans live. And the young lady had to be in a house, Mrs. Comela. It was a very simple house, made of bamboo, straw, reeds, with palms, a very simple thing, very suitable for the extreme heat that exists there. The three rooms, one of them was the bedroom, the other was the place where they prepared food and a cool intermediate room. Another space out there where they kept. This was outside the town. Nowadays, Corazal has some very nice hotels, but at that time there were none. So the town is over and everything is over. There's nothing except mountain, mountain, mountain. Life is going very well there. They are happy, they talk, they go, they laugh, and they are all young. At that time, she was a somewhat advanced student, so she was about 15 years old. The oldest of the group was probably about 19, but at Mrs. Comela's house, there were only girls left. Four girls plus Mrs. Comela, her husband, a little girl from 12, and a little boy from 10. Everything is perfect. That's when they stay for a month, and the day before they leave, they have a meeting in the center of town. The center of the town is nothing more than a field that is there, and there they meet with teacher Arcadio, and they are all very happy talking, agreeing on what is coming the next day, when the meeting ends, where the details are given, of you in this truck, you in that truck, the suitcases, everything ready. The teacher leaves, and the party is organized. The older ones, the boys, are going to go to a little dance here and make a little noise. But Miss C and her friend are not so keen. Blinkita. She's tired. You already know that you have to return the next day. It's many hours of travel. So they prefer to return home to Mrs. Camilla's house. It is a path. It is a very simple path to get there. One of the older boys in the group tells them, Hey girls, don't go. Surely they know how to get there. They are not going to be lost. And those two laugh. They are from Mexico City, ladies and gentlemen. In Mexico City, there are millions of possibilities to get lost. In this town, you just had to turn around and see, and at the end of the street, in the only spot there was, was Mrs. Camilla's house, on a little path, straight, until the last light. You can't not lose. So there go the two friends that, you and I, ha 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 ha, laughing at what they have talked about, are wearing shorts.
because with the temperatures there around 30, 30 and so many degrees Celsius during the night, that gets quite, quite strong. The fact is that they are walking, laughing in their light t-shirts, just as I don't know how much, how hot you are than me. When suddenly, Miss C reacts and says what is happening. What's going on? He realizes that they have left the path, that they have gotten into the undergrowth, a weed that reaches their waists of things that sting, that hurt. She has felt the stings of the grass on her legs, because there are also thistles on things that hurt. She feels this and realizes that her friend is still further away and is absorbed in looking at something that looks like a white wall that is ahead. She speaks to him white, white. Nothing, there is no answer white, white, what is happening. And that's when she realizes that on that fence there is something, it's something small, it's like small. She can't see it clearly. She can't see it well. It's dark. Well, there's not even public lighting. But with the full moon that's at that moment and the full moon in the coastal area, come on, it lights up well and you can see that there's like a small child standing on the wall, as if crouching, as if in a strange position, staring at Blanquita and Blanquita staring at him without moving. No matter how much she yells at him and calls him, he doesn't react until suddenly the lady comes, takes Blanquita by the arm and pulls her heart back until she falls, stumbles, tells her, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And the other one is all weird, all crazy. They arrive at Mrs. Camilla's house. It must be nine and at night. Don't imagine it at dawn. There is the man weaving his nets with which he is going to Ephesus the next day, making his arrangements. When the friend is there, Blanquita tells her, well, but why did you pull me? You almost threw me. Didn't you see the weeds? If you didn't notice, what am I going to realize? We got off the road. Stop, Stop talking nonsense. How are we going to get out? And you were looking at the fence. What were you seeing on the wall? Which fence? There was something on the fence above. You were seeing it. I didn't see anything. I don't know what you're talking about. I do not know how much. They start arguing. Why is this girl upset about the push she gave her? That she was scraped by the Arabs and all that. And he doesn't understand. Until suddenly, that man who is there fixing his nets turns around and says, Hey girls, what happened to you? And that's when Miss C tells him, Well, we were walking and suddenly I react and I'm in the middle of all these horrible weeds and all this. And my friend is up ahead looking at something that is on top of a fence. What was on top of the fence? Like a child. It just can't be. And the other tells him, I wasn't watching. You pulled me. You didn't let me see it. And they continue with the discussion until that man tells him, let's see, calm down, calm down. And he speaks to Carmilla. Carmilla, come here quickly. Come, Carmilla. And here comes Carmilla. Till I don't know who. There is a Shanek out there, and he was already carrying these girls. The two stare at each other. Or what? The Shanek was already taking them. The thing is that Mrs. Carmilla checks them well. She touches them. She sees that there is nothing on them. That there's nothing stuck. Nothing. And he does something to them. Something he says to them. Something he prays to them. The other white girl continues to seem annoying. That man tells them. Let's see, see ladies. They were lucky. And that's because you, I know, are stronger. Because if Miss Blanquita had come alone, the Shaneks would take her away. They take her. They already had her. They had already grabbed her. And what they do is they look for people like that. Still clean, still white. Young girls, boys, children, and they take them to the mountains. Because they like that, they like to take them. Some can be very bad and do very bad things to them. And they steal their spirit, the tonali. And after that there is nothing. Many never return. They stay up there and rot there and die there and end there. Others return. But they are no longer them. They are nothing. They just walk around here like slow, like gone. They didn't even notice. In short, they stayed that night in one of the rooms and kept an eye on them in case the Shanek didn't come back for them. And no, fortunately not. The next day, got on the bus, and more than 30 years have passed since that time. But Miss Cece was deeply impressed by what she saw. And that is the danger. 
unlike the classic pixie that runs around, hides your keys, loses your socks, pulls your hair and tangles the horse's manes. The shanek is going for something else. The shaneks can lose you. For many reasons. For fun. Because they like to see you get lost. Because they like to see you have a bad time. That you get wounds on your legs. Because of the grass. Because of the bushes or because they are simply going to steal your tonali. And then they will use it for something else. The tonali itself is your essence. It is your spirit. It is what gives you life. If they steal it, you start to get sick. You start to look skinny. You stop eating. You fade away. You get sad. And there is not much time, because once it has been stolen, they use it for something, and at a certain point you can't get it back. But in this case, both girls were lucky. The Shanex, even though it is said in certain regions of Mexico, such as the Tuxles in the middle part of Veracruz, where it is said that the Shanex can be white or black. The white people are the ones from home, the fun ones, the jocular ones, the blacks or the malicious ones. The reality is that they can be changed very quickly because the Shanek is a very liar. Everyone knows that the Shanek is a liar. It can make you think it's not there and then suddenly scare you into losing the Tonali. Or he can take your things, your children, your babies so that you will never see them again. It is said or was said in the past, according to local traditions, before the arrival of the Spanish, that the Shanek seek this for many reasons, among others because sometimes they like to take children. They have them there. They use them there for something they need. They use them there. That's why they steal them. Sometimes it's just to upset them, because they don't want you to be there, because they know that humans end up with everything. Jorge was drilling oil wells. He was watering oil, polluting, cutting vegetation, whatever you want in order. No matter how much the macro peers prevent these situations from happening and have certain reserves. The environment is always altered and they don't care about that life. Sometimes it's simply because they don't want us to be there. No, in terms of their appearance. They are described in two main ways. The biggest ones, up to 1 meter 20. The smallest ones, 60 centimeters. There are two main beliefs around Shanaik. One of them is that they have inverted feet. Do they point backwards? A somewhat rude characteristic Gacheni. That lord of dangerous things left them with their feet backwards. The other is that they look like children. But if you look closely, they are not children. DA are wrinkled and have very ugly faces. The vast majority lack an ear. They only have one. They are a bad copy. They have the intention of becoming familiar, but they are not well done. They don't really need a body. And the worst of all is that Shanek can also appear in other forms, from a plant. It can appear as a herb, as an animal, as anything. There are those who confuse them with witches, but that is not the case. The Shanek, when it manifests itself, you can tell that it is there, and proof of this is what Carlo tells us. Carlo tells us about a very crazy experience. Many years ago, and in an area with a lot of vegetation in Jalisco, his wife's relatives lived in an old house, an adobe house, made of cane. One of those that still have very primitive roofs and very remote. By the way, it was completely on the outskirts. The fact is that they lived peacefully there, away from everyone, quiet and pleasant. Well, they knew there were strange things. Vishanek, when you don't bother him, when you don't mess with him, sometimes he doesn't bother you, but only sometimes. Other times he does it simply for pleasure, and that's what happened that time. In the relative's house, they had the custom that from time to time their compadres would come from another town, a town that was about an hour away by horseback, and they would come to visit and they would bring tequila, mezcal, w, whatever. And they would get to drink there and laugh and tell stories. After a while, the compadres grabbed their horses and left, the compadre and the comadre. Normally only men drank. Because the women were on something else. But that time the wives also began to raise their eyebrows. And one after another. And one after another. 
until everyone was drunk. Grandma looked out and saw them all drunk. He said, well, that's it. Oh, uh, the compadres get on their animals and go there, balancing on the road where they go there. Minutes later, when the grandmother appears, it turns out that everyone in the house was asleep, but asleep in the chair outside. It's a very hot place, by the way. They are leaning on each other, very drunk, sitting in a chair. In short, the grandmother tells the kids, let's see, everyone get in. We're going to wait a little while for it to pass before we put them in. Let a while pass. You're on your way to feed the kids dinner, all that. When it occurs to him to look out, he opens the door to see how those two are doing. And he's surprised and feels like his feet are slipping. Because let me tell you that outside and around his son and his daughter-in-law, there are a bunch of little naked children jumping and doing mean things to them and pulling their hair and doing things to them while they jump and laugh. The lady closes the door. There's my God. Open it again and it's still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. And they are like that. They are small, petite, very, very dark, or rather like copper with strange hair. And that's when you realize that this is unusual, because where did these creatures come from? And then the little ones in the house, the children of those two people who are there drunk, look at the door and everyone is so scared that they leave the door closed and go in. They all hide in a room and start praying. Didn't he do anything to them? When they woke up from their drunkenness, they were obviously all battered, twisted and also with their clothes in disarray, with our jewellery. They had committed a very serious horror. It was Shanek territory. And in this place, although the Shaneks did not attack them, they did not hurt them, they did not steal their tonal, and they did not hurt them. They were simply curious and went to play with them, to take things from them. They were lucky. Grandma always knew how to protect the place. And it was a protected place. And still they jumped. No. What can be done to avoid this issue? Or how do you get rid of them? That's what Arturo tells us. Arturo lived in Tabasco, Mexico. In a part of southeastern Mexico that is kind of sunken. It's incredibly hot. It's not exactly the coast, but there is a lot of water everywhere. Vegetation as much as you want. And there are seasons when it can be above 40 degrees with the humidity and saturates the clothes that becomes very disturbing. The fact is that Arturo had a friend, and this friend coincidentally lived on the edge of a well-known lagoon. Like Wildfred there in a small house, his parents had a stall in the market. They were very honorable people, who had worked hard to have that house and a farm in another town known as Tipa. The fact is that when this Arturo visits his friend's house, notices something unusual. At the entrance of the house, there are a series of small red bags with some objects and some papers hanging from the door. And he also notices that in other parts of the house there are things like that. When he asks, the first thing his friend tells him is don't touch him. Please, they are protections. My grandmother knows about these things and she left us these precautions here. Arturo did not know anything about that because he came from an evangelical family, an evangelical Christian family, where these issues are considered all in the same bag as diabolical, and that's it. There is nothing more. Anyway, he asks what for, and that's when the friend tells him to stop the Shanex. Us. Why stop the Shanex? So that they don't get involved. How to stop them from getting involved? Yes, of course. And don't touch it. Why are they going to get involved? Because there are Shanaks here. In the lagoon, in addition to there being other strange things, there were Shanaks, and every once in a while, at least a couple of times a year, they would bring a kind of shaman, witch doctor, whatever you want to call him, a person from the ancient ethnic groups, from the people who were there before, who knew about these things and performed some small rituals. Because in this place, unlike what one imagines about the little elf, that happy, big-hatted one, here, the shaniks were very harmful. If you did well, they would break all your dishes. If things went wrong, they would kill your child. 
This is how these rites were performed. There were three species places that had the function of stopping this. Of course, when Arturo heard all, he even laughed. Internally, I was thinking how crazy, how crazy this is. He was having fun, and at the same time he was learning things, because his friend explained to him that the Shanaks came into the house, threw things, played, etc., etc., and that he had to be careful. Well, you'll have to be careful and laugh. A few days later, they leave school. They're a couple of kids. I don't know. Fourteen years old. Sixteen aren't very big. They go to their friend's house. They're next to the Gonpada Lagoon. When you enter, just as you cross the door, you hear that inside there is a barbaric scandal. Objects falling, things being hit. He can observe, Arturo can observe how suddenly something fires. He does not see them. He doesn't see little children as such. What you see are like small blurry spots that move very quickly. They move so fast and suddenly something fires. Falls and you hear a noise. Apparently, you could say it was laughter. As if there were many children playing inside. But he doesn't remember that it was laughter. But another noise. But it showed the presence of something alive that is jumping around here. Pulling, pulling, breaking. And he was paralyzed with fright. He is scared to the point that he remains paralyzed. And that's when his friend comes. And he holds him by the arm and tells him, Don't worry, nothing's wrong. Right now we control it. Do you remember that I told you that there were some prayers and some names to control this? Names. Yes, names. Names. Something is invoked. If you're afraid, better wait for me outside. And now you're going to see that Arturo was paralyzed by that. The impression was such that you left the house and waited there at the door. And that's when he starts to listen to his friend who goes room by room. Reciting something. He doesn't really understand what it is. But as he listens to it loudly from room to room, he hears the hubbub and scandal passing from one room to another. And then he notices something very peculiar. The friend, with a whip, with a belt, one of those used for clothing, hits as if he were hitting the air. But you can hear him hitting someone, and immediately you can hear all the chatter and how they move, and he continues hitting while he is reciting that. He whips with the belt. It sounds like he is hitting someone like when your dad hit you when we were kids, and the dad got angry, and there goes the whip exactly, that's how it sounds. And that's when it's finally over. I finish that, and he comes out and tells him no. They're gone. Something happened. They got in. And the way to get them out was through those prayers and with the whip. It would have to be a special whip. It wasn't just any animal belt or whip. But it had to be cured. Belief says it is that way. When you throw the into the wind, you hit them. If it's not cured, nothing is going to happen. It makes noise. But if they're prepared for it, you're going to hit them and they're going to run out of there. And he said that it was essential to do it. That for some reason, somewhere, someone left something open, threw something, one of the protections, and they got in. What was the problem with them being there? That they could do harm. Not just break things, but do harm. Because Shanex can cause harm. Unlike a little crack that hides things from you. Not these. And there are still people who think they are good. In certain regions, they are given gifts, small sweets, things like that, so that they do not bother them. But in others, it is preferable not to give them anything and try to get them out. And he learned that same thing there. A few months later or some time later, they thought about going to the farm there in Tipa. It is a very simple thing. The house in the middle of the exuberant vegetation, they arrive there with an idea in mind. Friends are going to arrive and they are going to have a party. And in one of those they even tasted. Some girls are coming to dance. They are 16 years old. Don't imagine there are perverts out there. Nothing of that. It's not a crazy idea to have a party with friends. And that's when the guy appears. Who lives next door? Anderson says, Hey, what are you doing here? No, no we're just here for a walk, man. Don't stay. Why, man, because there are Shanaks. The Shanaks are out there, and they are the bad ones. Don't stay. Let's do a ritual. 
or a ritual? Yes. Now you'll see. And then another relative appears with a table where they put things. It is a very simple wooden table. A piece of wood. Well, they put a bottle of brandy or something very strong. They put some stews of some kind there. Some pieces of something else. Fruits, something there. I don't know what they put in them. But when they saw the brandy and the cigars, what Arturo immediately thinks is, hey, we already know who is going to organize the party and he wants us outside so we don't interrupt the party. Eh, yeah. ha ha. When suddenly the guy turned around and said, no, this is not for us. It's for the Shanex. Well, if they are so bad, why is he giving them things? Says me, now they're telling you. And on the way the friend is saying, no, it's not a prize. It's to bring them so they can drink all that stuff they put in, eat it. And when they're half drunk, they can grab them. And one of two of the guys sees that if not, he is going to throw them away. But he is going to destroy them as if, according to what they said in that region, the Shanek can be damaged. It can be destroyed. And it was a problem because the Shanek can also do very ugly things. Not only are children stolen to steal their tornale, but also to use them there in their things. And they are very ugly things. There are those who say that some children can even be trained, instructed. They take them to their caves and there they teach them things. They learn things in the language of the Shanaks. All that. The problem is that the day they return to the world, 50 years have passed for a wall, but the boy still looks the same. It must have only been a few days or hours. I don't know. The problem is that the moment he crosses from the world of Shanek to the current world, he ages in minutes. He becomes the age he should be, and if he was a 20-year-old kid, he will be 70 and probably will not tolerate the change. Your body will age so quickly that you will die. And it is said that there can also be marriages, that is, that a man can have a Shanaka. But that is very dangerous because the Shanaka lives in her world, where time passes differently, where things happen differently, food has a different use. And if this man doesn't take care of himself, he will stay trapped there because he tries to return. The same thing will happen to you. Minutes must have passed for him. But many years have passed here. And if days have passed there, here when I return, it will be dust and ashes. The Shanek won't tell you. And when you try to rob someone, it is very dangerous. That is why there are special techniques, so that your kid doesn't get robbed, put his clothes inside out. This way the Shanek will not know if it is a child or a Shanek. Because he imagines that if they have their feet over there and their buttons over here, it's a scam and he won't understand how to take it. So he will leave it. That's why people usually leave their child sleeping in the sweater or t-shirt with the buttons on the back. So that the Shanek does not take it. There are different techniques. In each place are different beliefs and there are those who claim that. However, Shaneks can also be protectors. I don't know for sure. And in that sense, there are those who even claim that the Shanek, especially those closer to urban centers, can be very joking and have a macabre sense of humor. And they don't hurt. At least that's what they say. And that's what Erica tells us. Erica had a very crazy experience back in the year 2004. She went to the port of Veracruz. They had a great time. They had a few drinks. At a certain point in the night, he decides that it is time to go to sleep. They go to an apartment that is on the outskirts. In the middle of the vegetation, she has a room. A relative of that one has another room. So she closes her door, puts on her clothes to sleep. You can't wear many clothes because of the heat. And there is a little window. So that air can get in at least. The fact is that he opens the little window and lies down to sleep. A few moments later he is already sleeping. Suddenly feels something like weight. Like a sudden weight. Easy with his eyes closed. Like this on his chest. She felt something's climbing her up and hears. Wakes up after that sound and look around. Startled. The first thing that comes to mind. Is lightning. What did I take? Something made me hallucinate. This is a nightmare. How ugly. A little air is blown and it settles back down. She closes her eyes, but she is not asleep. 
he has simply closed his eyes when suddenly he feels that thing rising in his chest again and he repeats that again and an anana. It's like a mocking way, like annoying someone and an anana. It's not that he's saying anything. He's just doing something to annoy. She sits up. This time she does sit up because she is awake. She looks around, turns on the light. Nothing. There is nothing. It's after three in the morning. Has felt this clearly. He thought it was a bad joke. Maybe a combination of things. It was a figure over there of a fisherman or something. Then that what she felt, what she gave me, saw him moving away and escaping through the little window. It was something like a mix between sleep and awake. Well, he turns on the light and goes back to sleep. But as soon as he does that, he climbs back into that. He climbs and repeat that. Uh, 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 uh. And at that moment, she well awake, well aware. What she says is at the end. A very ugly rudeness. And your mother lives and it's a very ugly rude thing. And she shouts it. And at that moment, the thing that is above her, that she can see here, does not even move. She simply answers, Ananana. As a joker, he was a joker. He was a shanake. Everyone around there knew that this was a scam, but it didn't seem like it was going to hurt him. And so she did what she did. Tell him, there, I don't want to hurt you. I didn't do anything to you, nor do I want to do anything to you or bother you. Just leave me alone. I don't know what you are, but leave me alone. And so, with the light on, it stayed. Whatever it was had gone out the window. Even the drunkenness stopped. He had had an encounter with the Shanek. And they do this kind of thing too. They're not always going to kill someone, or hurt someone, or someone. Sometimes they're just going to play a joke. The problem is that this is the beginning. It is not easy to understand why they operate that way. There are those who say that if you go into a cave, you run a lot of risk because there will be shaneks everywhere. There are those who say no, you actually have to ask permission, bring a gift. Even in some regions it is said the gobins act that way, but it is not clear what it is. The thing is that all these people that I have shared with you tonight have lived strange experiences. But perhaps an even stranger one is the last one that I am going to share with you. And it has to do with the fact that sometimes Shanaks attach themselves to something and in that something they feel attracted to it. They feel attached to something and people believe that that how can I put it? You buy a pixie and you think that the one who does things is the pixie that you bought without knowing that maybe that pixie that little figure made of clay or ceramic what actually happened was liked it and the Shanek is going to give you a barbaric mess. This other story shows us a little of that. And this occurs in an area where, in theory, there should not be Shanex, which is in the middle part of Mexico, in the area of the state of Mexico, in a town known as Netepec. Many years ago, Joss, Joss one's wife's entire family went to live in another state. They left their little house. They had a house. They lent it to an uncle who lived with his wife and other relatives. The fact is that after some time, FND out that an old relative there wants to sell the house, thinking that they will never return and he already wants to sell it. They immediately return home. The aunt and uncle who live there grab their things and turn away. I don't know. The fact is that after a short time of being there, little things begin to happen to them. They weren't so simple things. Things were disappearing. Things appeared elsewhere. Suddenly you found someone else's keys in your bag. Suddenly you lost this. Suddenly, something broken appeared without anyone having been in the house. Suddenly, something appeared fallen without anyone having touched it, and so on. That becomes very complicated because the house really had a very heavy atmosphere. 
unlike the traditional domestic elf, whose presence is noted by these little games. But the atmosphere is pleasant. In that NTP house, the atmosphere became very dense. Tired. You felt a little overwhelmed. Afraid. All of this. So no, it was not a pixie, but a black shanek. And that became clear when one day a visitor arrived. The visitor was a lady. A lady who had some gift. A healer. And the first thing he tells them is, Hey, someone brought a shanek here. That. Did someone bring a shanek? No, we didn't bring anything. No, it's not that they brought it in a bag. Someone attracted a shanek. And it's for a figurine. Where is the figurine? And everyone says, which figurine? What are you talking about? A figurine? A little elf? Someone brought a little elf and now this other thing has stuck to it. And that's why it's annoying. Where is? Well, no. We don't know what he's talking about. How can they not know? He's looking for it. That's why he's making so much trouble. And that's why this is so bad. Look for that little figure. And with that, you can solve the problem. In short, they call the aunt on the phone. And the aunt tells them that yes, that she brought a figurine. That she brought a figurine. And that when they left, they took it because it was her figurine. In short, they ask you permission to please lend them the figurine. It's a little elf. Well, where, man, why not? Opal arrives with a cardboard box and they lend it to you. That lady, the healer, makes them a recommendation. They must repeat several things, as if to bring it. Say, look, here is the figurine. This figurine that you like, we're going to do something. Why don't you go with her? Or place where they will take great care of you. Where they will give you a lot of tasty things. Better than what is here. There where this figurine goes, you will FND everything you like. But you have to go with them, because here I don't have that. And so he has to repeat and repeat it as if he were a child. That they are going to give you a lot of sweets. But here I give you one and little things so anyone would think they were crazy. After that, you had to do some kind of trick. Take the box with the figurine and take it to a place where there was vegetation. And in this place, well, a safe place with vegetation was the church atrium, where there was a very lush, very beautiful garden. In short, the lady goes with her little box, with that little ceramic elf in there, walking. She arrives at the church, and as if she doesn't want the thing, she puts the little box aside and continues. It shouldn't turn around. The instruction was very clear. Do not turn. And there he leaves the box. When he talks to his aunt on the phone and says, Hey, where is my figurine? Oh, look, please pick her up. I left her at the church. That aunt obviously never answered the phone again in her entire life. Nor did she see them again because she was so angry. Because she went and picked up her little box and there was the little elf surprise. At the aunt's house, things got crazy because obviously when they get there... The Shanak who is attached to the figurine is delighted with life following his figurine with the promise of sweets and it turns out that there is nothing there. The elf was not the figurine. The Shanak liked that little figure. It was his little figure. It was his little toy. He loved his little toy. They took him there. They didn't comply and he started breaking all kinds of things until they left the place. The Shanak is a very liar. He usually says he's going to do something and doesn't do it. The Shanak tries to steal something from you. He tries to harm you, but if you don't do anything to him and treat him well, the Shanek can also protect in some way. That is a fact. There are stories that speak of Shaneks who have expelled a thief, who have protected a child from a large dog, who have protected a man who was hunting from a jug. How to know? Finally, they are stories, and this is what is believed, and something curious is known. The Shaneks also have Shanekitos and Shanekas. There are males and there are females. And they live in their world, but they certainly don't like us being here. We alter, we make noise, we contaminate, we cut, we burn, we consume, we bring in large animals, we step on the flowers. What being would like to live with us? Good night and rest in peace.